Ben Noir is a talented, educated and charismatic man, classically trained pianist and amateur boxer, a man with a sense of humour and an appreciation for aesthetics. Ben Noir is also a brutal, cold-blooded serial killer, as a camera crew follows his actions from the routine to the murderous, filming a documentary on this dangerous subject. Ben Noir is revealed to be both a devilishly evil and deceptively charming man, surprisingly considerate to the filmmakers who follow him. This this is Man Bites Dog, a gallows humour dark comedy that delves into truly uncomfortable territories such as child murder and rape. The tone is established from the get-go as a brutally disturbing one, as the first shot in the film is of Benoit strangling a woman to death with a wire. Murder is instinctive to him. Things become more challenging as the film develops. Sequences of quickly cut shots of graphic murder depict the efficiency and enthusiasm in which Benoit kills his victims. This sequence of quick cuts follows after Benoit talks about two children playing with a gun. The children playing with a gun and the sudden shock the shocking contrast of gory violence that soon follows illustrates a point regarding desensitisation. While the children play with a toy gun, Benoit plays with real guns, his thrills gained from watching blood run. As a murderer, he is versatile, for example, by entering an elderly woman's apartment under the guise of a television presenter, Benoit verbally assaults the elderly woman at gunpoint, leaving her to die via a heart attack from the shock, saving himself a bullet. This experience, he admits, allows him to test new ways of killing people. Some of his murders are blunt, a bullet through the head, and yet others are much more inventive, such as the way he murdered the elderly woman, acknowledging that he recognised the heart medication she was on. Man Bites Dog might not be the most obvious example of a comedy film. Its pitch black sense of humour isn't likely to resonate with all viewers, but humour does sliver through during dark moments. When Benoit admits that killing the elderly woman this way has saved him a bullet. It's a darkly tongue-in-cheek sentiment that indicates his belief that she wasn't worthy enough of a bullet, and also his intention to stay cost-effective. When Benoit robs her apartment, searching for jewellery and money, his demeanour is light-hearted, as if killing elderly people was an everyday occurrence experienced by the viewer. He playfully takes money from under the mattress, exclaiming bingo through murder and burglary. Benoit gets paid, making serial killing his profession. Benoit does refer to what he does as a form of work, as something artistic, commending his own actions as admirable, despite literally killing people. The film's sharp, droll sense of humour comes through during moments like this, when Benoit delves into digressions. Early on, another example of the film's sense of humour is demonstrated as Benoit discusses the amount of weight necessary to keep a body from floating up to the surface of the water. He discusses it in detail, with such a prepared that we know early on that Benoit has done this before so often that it seems like he knows what he's talking about. He is experienced. The next shot shows Benoit lifting a body over a bridge, dropping it into the water beneath, but the body is unable to sink as the water is way too shallow, therefore undermining the discussion about weighing down bodies. This is a great darkly visual gag in the film that helps establish the film's sense of humour. Yes, this is a disturbing scene with the disposal of a body, but it's surprisingly and effectively funny to see an experienced serial killer make such a mistake as to not find water deep enough to sink the body in. It is as if Man Bites Dog knows exactly when to undercut its tonal shifts. From a detailed and morbid discussion on weighing down bodies, the film offers us a brilliant visual gag. When the film portrays Benoit and the documentary crew scoping out a location, Benoit telling jokes, albeit perverse, his light humour is undercut when he murders a family and a child nearly escapes, causing him to be disappointed even after he catches the child and kills him. Another moment of joviality, undercut by brutality, is when Benoit gets the documentary crew drunk in a bar, forcing themselves into an apartment where everyone rapes a woman as her husband watches helplessly. By the morning, the couple are left brutally butchered. Man Bites Dog has a disturbing but masterful ability in being 
being able to undercut its tensions or humour with the reverse, effectively bringing the audience a moment of dark comedy, a relief of laughter, or bringing the audience out of the comedy, reminding us as viewers of the horrific actions we've been expressing enjoyment towards. Yes, Benoit's actions are deplorable, but how can we truly judge him when we have found engagement in his violence? The film forces us to confront our own relationship with violence. We condemn it, but does that condemnation mean anything when we find curiosity in violence? Visually noticeable within Man Bites Dog is its cinema verite style, handheld camera and plenty of realistic footage, and its black and white imagery sometimes humorously mocked, such as when Benoit comments on low cost housing and the lack of aesthetic appeal of such buildings, criticising their use of red brick, which we cannot actually see. This is an aesthetic which both reflects the low budget filmmaking of the fictional documentary crew within the film and the real filmmaking team, keeping costs low by using the cheapest film available while also being an aesthetic decision which reflects the seediness and murkiness of Benoit's criminal actions. The cinema verite style of Man Bites Dog also reveals that Man Bites Dog is a found footage film. When Benoit escapes from prison for his crimes, he returns to discover that people closest to him have been brutally murdered and that he and his documentary crew are soon to perish. While it isn't necessarily important who kills Benoit or the film crew, it could be anyone, as it is portrayed that Benoit's arrest was a very public case. What is important is that this is how the film concludes, and that for us to view this film, someone must have discovered the footage, therefore making the audience direct participants in the narrative. Within the world of the film, these filmmakers, accessories to Benoit's crimes, and guilty of their own abhorrent actions such as rape, die. Their footage left until someone must have stumbled across it, edited it together, and distributed it, likely via dubious means in similar ways that infamous shockumentaries are discovered, bootleg VHS tapes, gradually ripped and shared online, similar to infamous pieces such as Executions, Traces of Death, and the Mondo Kane franchise. If Man Bites Dog aims to reflect a genuine shockumentary, the seediness of those productions is preserved within Man Bites Dog. In conclusion, Man Bites Dog is a fascinating blurring of dark, gallows humour and disturbing thriller, presented in a way as to reflect a genuine documentary, a shockumentary, a film that feels like we shouldn't really be watching it, and yet we are. With a few darkly guilty laughs along the way, Man Bites Dog confronts the viewer and forces them to question why are we so disgusted with Benoit? When we're also so curious about him and what he does.